What's up everyone? Today I'm going to show you the three custom settings I have that I use to make my videos. If you watch until the end of the video, I will have a secret custom setting I have for when I take my pictures. So if you'd like to see that, please uh, stay tuned until the end of the video. So let's begin. So the first setting I have is um, a custom one setting which I use for making YouTube videos. So my settings I use for that is I will have my video format that I use is 4K at 23.98 which is pretty much at 24 uh, frames per second all I. So that will be used for editing. Now, it's already at 24p, and then I have that disabled, and then I also have my high frame rate disabled as well. I also will have my movie cropping, sound recording is on auto, and my movie digital IS is off. I also have lens aberration correction, remote control disabled. Now, for my picture settings, I have my white balance correction is zero, custom white balance, and then white balance is just AWP. Um, everything else is default what it's always set at although the one thing I changed is my picture style now normally in default you'll be able to go on to this one but you uh, since I changed it to what I did was I have Canon log settings here so I have Canon log on at an 8-bit um, usually that's you can get really good results with that. Some people want to max it out 10-bit, but I like to keep it on on 8-bit. Now, if you turn off, now you'll be able to see that picture style. Now, picture style is auto, portrait, landscape, fine detail, neutral, standard. Now, for some cameras, it doesn't come with a log setting. So, a lot of the time, uh, the best thing for videos, you can go down to neutral. Um, that'll give you the most flattest uh, profile picture you can get. But since this has Canon log or C log, I'll go down to there, click on, go to on 8-bit. Everything else I'll have, the color matrix, I'll just have original, view assist is off, all that stuff. Go back to menu. Now you can see that you can't choose any picture style because you have C log on it. Otherwise, I usually do an AF method. Um, that you can do many, this is the zone AF, but you can do large zone, uh, horizontal or vertical, you can do expanded area, expand um, one point, or you can do face tracking. Now, I actually don't really normally do face tracking. I just keep it on zone AF because then I can pick a zone on where I want it to be focused and then I can know for sure that that's going to be in focus. So I'll keep it on that. This is just um, settings you can do to format the pictures, but we're not going to get into that. Now, how I set my custom profile, let's say I got everything down that I want to do. So what I do is I go to the settings here and I'll switch all the way to the sixth page. Now what this will do is it'll give you this list here. Um, but the main one you want to focus on is custom shooting mode, C1 through C3. So what this can do is you click on that. Um, all the settings I have, you can either clear settings, auto update set, disable. Uh, you can register settings. So then what you do is click register settings and then you can choose custom C1, C2, or C3. Now, since I use these for videos, and I do this a lot, I normally do for C1, because this is my primary video format that I use. I'll click on C1, I'll ask for register, you click OK. Now, since I already have it set up on this, I'm not gonna mess around with it anymore, so I'm not gonna click OK, but you would click OK, and then um, you'd have it right there. It'll give you instructions. The other settings I have for C1 is um, you always want to do that 180 rule where you want to be double your frame rate. So I'm at 24 frames. I want to be at 50, so I'm at 50 right now. Another setting I have is, which I keep on all of my settings, is for videos to get that really nice blurry background but clear, crisp front ground focus is I have my aperture at f2.8. 
And then I always keep my ISO at 400. Even in bright daylight and everything like that, that's gonna be like the best setting you can have for the Canon EOS R. If you know a better ISO for it, please leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear that. Try to keep that setting the same as much as possible because then I have variable ND filter on my lens. So if I'm in a brighter setting, I can darken it. If I'm in a darker setting, I can op uh, clear it out more and make it a brighter one. For my second setting, I go to C2. What I have here is I do a 60 FPS instead of the regular 24 4K, I'll do a full HD 60 FPS. So this, um, you do uh, some slow-mo products with that if you want to keep definition still and you want to keep that as high as quality as possible but get some slow-mo videos in there um 60 fps could do pretty well everything else is the same so i'm not gonna you know go through all of that again but all of it is the same except for the movie recording quality here so disabled high frame rate is disabled the only thing is i'll have the full hd 60 frames per second all i well, you go to settings you go down to Page six, custom shooting mode, register settings, and then I set this for C2, custom two. two. And this just makes it easier for me to switch back and forth. Like let's say I'm taking a video, all of a sudden I wanna switch and get some B-roll, switch to C3 or C2, switch back to C1, boom, I am ready to go for another video. I also have everything the same, but this time I have it one over 125. Since we're at a 60 FPS, I want to be double that. The only problem I have with this, with my uh, Canon EOS R, is that this only records in just HD at 120 frames per second. But as you can see, this one's a little bit different. You, you gotta switch, like you can't click on these, but you can click on just this high frame rate. So what happens is, I'll disable this real quick. Now you can go to this one. But what you wanna do is, um, you want to go to switch to high frame rate and enable that. You can see automatically that it will automatically put it at the 120 FPS for editing all I. So it automatically does that. You don't need to switch anything else. Otherwise, everything else is the same. Nothing else is different or has changed. So you go to settings, go to page six, and then you do custom shooting mode, register settings, and I do it to C3. My last setting for my 120 frames per second, I have it 250. It'll help give you the best um, out of your videos and your camera in order to get those nice crisp looking videos. Now for the settings you've all been waiting for, I will be showing you the settings I have for my pictures. So what I do is I have my image quality, I do it at raw. Now. You can do C-RAW. I honestly, I've had better luck with just RAW. And then you can also do it with uh, no JPEG or you can do a RAW picture with a, a JPEG picture as well. You think I should have a different setting or if, if you know that a different setting would be better, um, then please leave a comment down below and I'll definitely take a look at it. But for now, I just keep it at RAW. Now, I also enabled my dual pixel raw cropping aspect ratio. Now, what's really cool is you can actually set this to an aspect ratio or a certain crop. Um, so a lot of crop cameras are normally set to a 1.6. Like, let's say if I had a older Canon lens that wasn't for a full frame camera, that I would also, I would set it to the 1.6 times crop. Since I do have a full frame lens on, I'll keep it at full. That also helps the sensor get as much light as possible to get those nice crisp pictures. Um, I usually set my image review to two seconds. I normally actually don't look at my pictures every single time. I just shoot and shoot. The more pictures you take, the higher the chance you will get the picture you want. Second setting is color space. I always keep to an sRGB, not Adobe RGB. Uh, sRGB is more compatible with a lot more things and it'll just help get that more correct color. Picture style, I have in fine detail. 
So my exposure level, I have it at a third. ISO speed settings increments, I have it at a third. I have bracketing auto cancels on, bracketing sequence. So bracketing sequence is how you can take HDR photos. So if you take a look here, much you'll have one that's a, a low, one that's medium, and one that's a high. Number of bracketing shots. Uh, I normally do three just to save space on my card. Um, but that's how many pictures they'll take from dark to light in order to get the best detail for my HDR photos. Um, this customized MFN bar. So this works really well because this bar right up here, you can touch to adjust like your ISO. So I have it to my ISO speed, but you can have it set up to really anything. Uh, I normally don't really use it too much for my videos, but for pictures, I use it a lot more for that. But what's really cool is just a touch bar too. So you just touch it and hold until it says on and then you can adjust it. And then it automatically goes off after a few seconds of not using it. So that works really nice in case you're moving your faces up against it and let's say your cheek rubs up against it, you're not messing with your settings. Please like and subscribe if you wanna see more videos from me.